today I'm going to be talking about design digital experience. I'm going to be talking about what actually fails, what actually works. If you're not going to be talking specifically on, you know, gamification is a very much part of it, but I'm going to talk about a lot of things that we have done, test cases that we have done, we have been successful, uh, something which is from the consumer industry that we have incorporated, and we have a team which is of psychologists, sociologists, anthropologists, medical doctors, uh, and analysts who form this team uh, globally. So the question is, it's not what we teach them. It is about how and what is their sense of how they consume that learning. So some of it is going to be a little bit technology oriented, but I'm going to be talking about it very rapidly in the time that we have been given. So this is the technology topography today, which is on three levels. It's say something which is near shore, something which is juvenile, and something which is nascent. So it, it talks about data visualization, it's cause of artificial intelligence. Now this is a whole canvas of stuff that is going on today in the world. How much of it we get into learning? Now this session is going to be talking about some of those test cases that we have done, and I'm going to be giving you certain inputs about them. Now in this, the ones which are starred are the ones which we are doing as part of the Center of Excellence. So you would have MOOCs, then you would have SWOPs, then you would have artificial intelligence, you would have rich media experience. What we did is, we took up nicely curated PDF document of so-called competency dictionaries of the organization. Done by the big five, the stuff, all of us have them, right? What are the typical ones? Innovation, strategy, customer centricity, fail safe, nice little ones. And I'm a behaviorist, I'm a psychologist. So we took two parameters of the behavioral competency. And these were the behavioral parameters that we took. Feedback and teams. Right? Now why did we take them? It's not that they are the most critical. We took them that we can, when we're running this project, these are easier to measure. In the sense, observation behavior is easier to measure. It looks at observation behavior. So when you take a flight out, see that observation behavior, see the mystery shopping. So we took up these competencies. We defined the competencies into demonstrated behavior, which you can see. And then we tried seeing at works, 70, 20, 10 principle. So we did something like that, not exactly trying to measure whether they have grown into nurturing people or in feedback, effective feedback, but we qualified what is the behavior which talks about nurturing teams or giving feedback. In this exact of four or five months, we divided and something which is very critical to a learning function, which we still believe is one of the best methods, which is effective, is using kinesthetic layers. We use a lot of layers. What is the kinesthetic layer? Activity oriented, yeah? And we call it the moments of truth. So every 15 days, just for 90 minutes, these sub-teams used to come to one facilitator who is to do an activity. So we use this kinesthetic layer to look at very qualified demonstrative behavior during a simulated gamified environment. What does it mean by doing that? and we captured the data per se. How we captured it was also different. We captured it using real-time data analytics. Okay? We used, some of our partners are sitting in this room. We used platforms which were giving real-time data on what they were doing. So this was a kinesthetic layer, which was one of them. Psychometric layer, very important. Psychometrics is a science. It is also something which is empirically validated. So we used a suite of psychometric tools, predictive analytics, like we used something like Charlie HR, we used Tom's profiling for the team members. And we kept that report, but we did not do a classical debrief with it. The reason we wanted to do it is we wanted to find out the corroboration between the psychometric reports and what we measure using the digital device layers. Okay, we wanted to find a corroboration there. So we did not do a classical debrief, we got the reports, we kept it, and we wanted to report. But interestingly, causation is not resulting into consequence. That's something which the statisticians say. You know, so it's that average. So it's one death. So they'll get. So we, we kept it per se on a psychometric, but we deal with now, in psychometrics. I don't know how many of you know about game-based psychometrics today. I'll be giving you some names. You may wish to know down. Pymetrics is one of them which we use, which uses action learning game-based psychometrics done and developed by Howard, and it is being practiced. There's a lot of data that goes into it. But we used some of those psychometric methods, which was fun, engaging, at the same time looking at the cognitive part of it, some part of the emotional part of it. 
So the psychometric layer is something that we use as a layer. Digital device layer. Now this was massive. Okay? This was massive. Something that I have uh, is I'm wearing is called the Fitbit Surge. I'm wearing it because we used some of it to draw out measures of learning. Now let me tell you how. Fitbit Surge uses biometric principles of biometric parameters like the pulse, the heart rate and stuff. We combined it with some other stuff and some other sciences and tried to corroborate the data. That was one of the digital devices. We used something called as NFCs. This is how I'm having it in my hand. NFCs. NFCs is near field communicators. We used things like Me Motion. Me Motion is an application which was used for voice temper and pitch. It gave me a report of the voice analytics of the team which was talking, because teaming was one of the issues, right? Teaming and feedback. Then we used something called as Human's Eye. Human's Eye details a lot of these activities that you do within the team. So what it does is NFC is near field communicators. Most of the phones have NFC. You don't have to build content separately. Now, how do we use this? Person walks across, you can have posters with NFC readers, which is like this. You can push content remotely into NFC, bite size, mega size, surveys, anything, including if people have to go back home, their business cards can be done on NFCs. So we use these kind of stuff in our base, in our training rooms, it was placed across, and we could change the content from anywhere in the world. Because it, it is a free software, you can change the content, you can push the content. Retail store. So we got drew examples from the retail, from the wellness, from the life sciences, and built it into this program. And we found success, we also failed. But that's fine. But this is a small, very small, low cost environment that you could do and push learning, which is engaging, exciting, doesn't have to be there, and small little nuggets that can be done. Doesn't cost anything. Now, things of gamification is beyond leader badges, let me tell you. Leader badges don't get you anywhere. In Pokemon Go, what we did is we rigged two classrooms and we said at the end of the 90 minute session, the person who has the maximum number of Poke catches gets a small little prize or credit. Lo and behold, everybody stayed true. Okay? Because every five, seven minutes there was a Pokemon touch, 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 touch coming up. And they wanted to catch it, so they stayed there. And you might say, did they learn in the process? Don't know. But did they stay in the process? Yeah, of course. Did I have a 100% dependence? Of course. All right? Gamification is also of something called as humor, humor leadings. Humor leadings was a term coined by an anthropologist that says people want to play. Okay? People just want to play. And it is also about how do you give that experience in the process. If you see the background, it shows you a map. Now, the map is about a race, Formula One racetrack. Now, these teams of 18 were asked to give tasks on theming and feedback. Every task culminated into a mile, which gave them a point on the grid. So in the coffee table counters, people used to say, today I'm in the G grid, to be in the I grid. Now, in order to do so, they have to pass a test. Pass a test in the sense, on the normal way, of what we are capturing, which converted into a mile. Now, best part of it is, any gamification model that you try to attempt, we have seen over the years, and I have seen personally with my experience, try to decouple the backyard problem to your game board. The gamification model has to be decoupled from your backyard problem. This was on teaming and on feedback. Every task, when they went from checkpoint uh, home one to checkpoint O, which is here, it lasted four months, and each of the movement was determined by a task that they had to do. Every week on a Thursday, we got a gong. You know a gong, which is used in classrooms? And we used to play the gong, and then we used to publish the results of that particular team on the game board. Okay? So we converted a lot of these activities or demonstrated behavior into miles. We did not talk about how this is going to be training them onto teams or onto feedback. We never spoke about it. The design was completely on the game board in a sense they were doing a habit again and again and again and again to develop that skill area, to develop and look into those areas that they actually factored on. Okay, how many of you have heard of clout? Clout is a social influencing scale. Again, a freely available stuff, okay? It gives you social influence. So we used most of the social medias 
what we did is we gave these people, made them zero avatar. Each individual in that intervention, we made them a new avatar. They created a new avatar, not because we were we were not we do not know how to exactly take the existing. See, another important point of gamification is zero play concept. You cannot start a gamification model with somebody who has got a lead and you want to initiate something. So gamification is different from a game. Okay, gamification is about the journey. It's not about the destination. You play chess to do checkmate. That's a game. The way you play the chess is gamification. Okay, that's the critical difference. So everybody has to be on zero play. And they came up with a cloud score. Cloud score was again a gamification mile point. Everything that we gave, we gave them a gamification mile point, which took them where? To the game board. All right? So you have different cloud scores. How do you build teams? So we did something here, which was point revolution. We were very happy with it because we got results here. Okay? We found out that there is something called as AD, or average distance. Average distance is the distance from one individual of the team to the other individual of the team. And you can derive the average distance. How well are you connected to another person? You may be sitting in the room, but your AD may not be lesser. So we found out a way to fair error, and that's how we call it as this. So it can be on the business side of it, or it can be on the individual side of it. We took up one individual of the team with the other individual and found out how are you knowing that person in an average distance. But that's not enough. We went ahead and did something called as a network path, or NP. It's a ratio. Network path is, if you have to be connected to the person, which are the different networks you have? Be connected. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, that is called a network path, but that's not enough. We went ahead and found the frequency between those network paths. The ratio between AD to NP to F gave me a teaming demonstrated coefficient. But how do you do it? How do you actually measure people when they are working on the site, they just come to me for 90 minutes? So we use these devices, devices which talk to each other, devices which actually look at network maps, and there is something called Navizon, which is an internal GPS system. So we found out, using Memotion and stuff like that, that how much time they were talking, how much time they were receiving. And we created these network analysis maps for this team. Instant messaging is one of the most profound messaging partner in your social world today. We, as professionals, don't know how to use it. We are lacking there. We did sentiment analysis on each of these words, whichever dictionary. There were tons and tons of data was being generated, and we got Keywords is defining those teams as a teaming demonstrated action that they were doing. The neurosciences talks about important facets of chemicals, some of them which are sorted here, which are used in game design or which are used in learning. When we design a game board, we look at what triggers the excitement levels, what is it that trigger. It looks at those trigger mechanisms, it looks at those pain areas, and when we design it, we give them those excitement levels. You know, in assessment centers, the development assessment centers, we are experimenting with one of the biometric games to look at stress levels of how they are. And we have to contextualize the storyboard. See, once upon a time, story always sells. Nancy Duarte talks about suspension of disbelief, which is one of the key elements of game, de game design. Suspend the disbelief. Okay? Put them in a world. The haptics gives you tactile feedback very much used in manufacturing defense system to see the recall of the gun. It uses haptics to train the person of how much it is. So haptics is being used to train people on manufacturing embedded system. All you require is you need a wall which will project the image and there are sensors which give you haptic feedback on what you're using. Now this is an example of how learning content can be developed using virtual reality and augmented reality. You can build characters of VR. If you want to build a case study, you can build characters and give playing cards where people can play the entire game. Immersive experience. Okay? That's how a VR and AR works. Immersive video. We develop videos which talk to each other. If you see this video, it is actually inter it is taking your inputs directly into the video and it is giving a different frame. So when you start the video, the ending and so whether and this is called a decision maps or journey maps which we created small little modules using immersive video you need to have one single frame you cannot have five different partners giving you that platform some of the partners are sitting here we created virtual assessment centers using simulations using game boards using pearsons using some of the tools that we are using 
on one single interface. And that's how we are training on virtual assistant centers, called WACs. Okay? We are using natural language processing to see how people and what people, why do they abandon e-learning? In the learning system, when we get reports, we look at not completion ratios and we see that the program is debunked. That's where we use artificial intelligence. Massive amount of L0, L1 jobs in the learning fraternity and HR is going to be debunked because we've been taken over by bots. In the sense, you still have humans which will do the higher order thinking. Opinions, judgments will be taken over by humans. Nomination management, venue management systems doesn't require rocket science. So, last but not the least, this is called the creme de la creme. It is called emotional intelligence. How we use emotional intelligence in designing our game boards and designing our programs. Facial action units. Our facial action units, 45 different parts of your face is divided into emotional intelligence points. Like three expressions, micro expression, macro expression, sublime expression. Sublime expression travels. Two billion face points over the last so many years have been tracking. It's called Affectiva. Now, I can also change the matrix. I'm looking at only the facial expressions. I can change the matrix and look at different uh, matrix of what I want to select. We have done in classrooms and done away with feedback in some of our rooms. So if you see, it can do, so you can have classrooms where you can do away with this. Along with that, we did something on video analytics on recruitment as well. This can be played behind e-learning programs in the back end. You don't even get to know. You can see the engagement levels of how the e-learning is playing based on how the learner is engaged into it. Thank you very much. Okay, last.